over or under? That is the question. Welcome, football fans. It's Mitch here, back with another NFL video. And in this video, I'm predicting all 32 over-unders. Will your team surpass their win total in 2024? Or will they underwhelm and disappoint? Will I predict your team to go over or under their assumed win total in 2024? If that sounds good, don't forget to gronk, spike the like button, and subscribe for more NFL videos. In-depth analysis on all 32 teams, just like this. Also, hit me in the comment section, man, and let me know. Do you agree or do you disagree with my over-under picks? How I'm going to do this is I'm going to begin with the over picks. We're doing 16 overs, 16 unders to make it realistic. And I'm going to go in the order of my confidence from least confident to most confident beginning with the overs, and then ending with the unders. Because I want to begin positive and end negative and make people wait a little longer for those unders so that you at least have to watch a little longer in this video to hate comment, okay? So if that sounds good, let's get started, man. Now that you understand how this works, let's begin with the overs, the least confident over pick is the Tennessee Titans going over six and a half. Tennessee is a very tough team to predict this year. But if I had to bet on the Tennessee Titans, and this is gun to my head for every team, I had to bet, put some money on the Titans, I would go over six and a half. I think they're being slept on just a little bit. I look at the key areas of their team. Will Levis enters year two. A new offense that's going to be much friendlier than the one he was in last year. It's an offensive-minded guy coming from Cincinnati, bringing that offense, Callahan's offense, Zach Taylor's offense, Joe Burrow's offense, with maybe a little bit of wrinkles here and there to help Will Levis to Tennessee. The biggest aspect that I really think the Titans will improve is the offensive line. I think Callahan bringing his father from Cleveland is going to have a significant impact on their run game and their pass game and their protection. Not only that, but they did draft a first round left tackle who should be plug and play in Latham. They have a second year first round pick also on the offensive line. And I do like other players on this line already like Daniel Brunskill. And they did sign a top tier center from the Broncos. So the offensive line will have better coaching, better personnel. And I think that will allow them to run the ball with two pretty good running backs. They signed Tony Pollard this offseason. They do have Spears, who I like quite a bit. And then some dynamic receiver options. They just signed Tyler Boyd not long ago. DeAndre Hopkins is still there. And of course, Calvin Ridley with the big money. And I think Calvin Ridley is better, actually, than people give him credit for. I think there was a reason he was paid that much on the open market because his value, I think, can be had in every offense across the NFL. The Jacksonville Jags really didn't utilize him that well, but I do think he'll be utilized well in Tennessee. So I like the outlook of the offense and the potential that exists. As long as Will Levis can just put the ball in the right places, not turn it over too much. And with that big arm, he can hit a couple big throws in a game. I think their defense is solid. I don't think it's terrible. I don't think it's great. I think they have aspects I like. I'm a big Jeff Simmons guy. I like Harold Landry still. And Arden Key has always been my boy. I don't love their linebackers but I do love their corners. I think Legereus Sneed is a stud. I think Chidobi Awuzie is good when he's on the field and Roger McCreary is very feisty. So they do have questions for sure. But when I look at the potential of this team, I think their potential exists to a nine or 10 win type of team. They did win seven games last year, right? Don't forget that. So I have them just basically getting to where they were last year. And I know that Mike Vrabel's not there anymore and I'm a huge Mike Vrabel guy, so that hurts. 
But I like their approach this offseason. I think they've gotten drastically better from a roster standpoint. The second least confident overpick is the New England Patriots. My New England Patriots going over five and a half. This one is super tricky and difficult because the Patriots won four games last year. But the question is, have they improved enough at quarterback to really put them over five and a half? To get them to six or seven wins. Is Jacoby Brissett truly better than Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi? Have they improved their offensive line and their receiving core enough for them to boost this offense? Is Alex Van Pelt the answer as the offensive coordinator? Plenty of questions on offense with the Patriots. We know that the defense is going to deliver. It's going to keep them in games. But how many games can the offense deliver at the end in the fourth quarter? That's the ultimate question. I kind of see New England between four and seven wins this year. So depending on which side of that spectrum you're on, you're going to pick over or under, which makes this a difficult selection. I do think that they've improved on offense. I do think that the floor of the quarterback position is a lot higher with Jacoby Brissett. And I do feel like the ceiling is massively higher if Drake May comes in and is a baller right away. So here sitting in May... I kind of feel like the over is the right pick given the very good defense. Even if the offense is just a tad better, they should squeeze out one or two games. They had like a three-game stretch where I swear to you, they allowed like 23 points and they lost all three games. In three games, they allowed like 20 points and they lost all those games. So that was the Patriots last year. Hopefully they're a little bit more exciting and a little bit better this year. So I have them going over five and a half. Next up, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going over seven and a half. The Bucs were a divisional round team in the NFC last year. I think they won nine games in the regular season. And I think Vegas is basically telling us here that Atlanta is going to be improved. Carolina is going to be improved. And New Orleans is still about the Bucs level. And I think all of those opinions are fair. But I feel like the Bucs, out of them and New Orleans, are the more consistent team. I think they've got the more consistent vibe. I think they've got the superior leadership. I think they've got the superior leader at quarterback. And yeah, maybe Baker's been a tad more inconsistent throughout his career than Derek Carr. But I do think he's a better quarterback right now than Derek Carr. I don't think there's a question about that. I think the offensive line... Features a couple really studly players with Tristan Wirfs, now a first-round pick at the center position. And I think there's going to be improvement in that unit this year. I think their run game is going to be relatively solid because of the offensive line. You still got Mike Evans. You got Chris Godwin to work with. Todd Bowles always has a strong defense. It's schematically sound and usually attacks an offense. And he can really steal a couple games with game plans alone. So I got the Bucs going over seven and a half. I feel like eight or nine is right for the Bucs. So over with Tampa Bay. My fourth over selection is the Seattle Seahawks going over seven and a half. I've been up and down with the Seahawks all off season long. As you guys know, if you've been tracking my videos, but ultimately when it came down to it, this team won nine games last year, and I felt like they underwhelmed. So just that inherently, right? And we swap head coaches, an older guy that I feel like a little bit outdated in his style and his strategy to a younger guy that's up and coming, I think's awesome on defense in Mike McDonald. The same quarterback, Geno Smith, who actually got hurt last year. Drew Locke had to fill in there. And again, like just a team that felt like they just didn't live up to expectations last year. I expected that team to win 10 or 11 games, make the playoffs, be the sixth seed in the NFC, and they just didn't live up to it. This year, I think people are underestimating Seattle, I think is the right word. Their offensive line is flawed, and that worries me a lot. The new offensive system that previously has not really been seen from an NFL eye is a little bit worrisome, but when you have that much talent, Kenneth Walker, Noah Fant, DK Metcalf, Jackson Smith and Jigba, and Tyler Lockett with Geno who can distribute the rock, 
I feel decent about the offense. And then you have this defense led by Mike McDonald, who's going to make it schematically different and better. Just period, better. They're going to improve on defense because of the coaching, period, right? But then you look deeper at the personnel, and I feel like it's largely the same, but you think about how some of these players could improve in this defense, like Devin Witherspoon in year two, and his usage potentially as a Kyle Hamilton-esque player, but then also versatility in a way that Hamilton doesn't have to play perimeter, kind of man-to-man corner that way. And then you're thinking about the defensive line by adding Byron Murphy to Draymond Jones and Leonard Williams. That is tough. Nwosu returns, who was their best edge rusher two years ago. He was injured for a large portion of last year. I think their linebackers are solid. You still got love in the back end at safety. So there's a lot of pieces. Reek Woolen might be better in this defense as well. I'm intrigued to see that. But overall, I just feel like the coaching is kind of what held Seattle back last year. And I feel like the coaching is what's going to put them above this seven and a half. That just feels a tad too low for a team that had very high expectations last offseason. Next up, the Las Vegas Raiders. I have going over six and a half. This feels a little bit disrespectful. Obviously, a play on the quarterback situation with Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell. Some people think it's going to be O'Connell. Some people think it's going to be Minshew. Given Minshew's contract, you would think maybe it would be Minshew. But O'Connell could also be the starter, given that he wasn't bad as a rookie. I don't really see a huge ceiling for him, but I don't really see a huge ceiling for either player. And honestly, it's rather going to be O'Connell in year two, who has just beaten out Gardner Minshew, which is a good thing. Or it's Gardner Minshew, who has a pretty high floor, who just did pretty well with Indianapolis last year and had them, you know, a play out of the playoffs. So I look at the Raiders and I think they've improved their offensive line with their draft. I think that Brock Bowers adds another dangerous weapon to this offense. Yes, Josh Jacobs is gone, but I'm not too concerned. I think Zeus can get it done on the ground. I like Jacoby. I like Devontae. I feel like Michael Mayer should take a step forward in year two. I think, you know, you got Colton Miller at left tackle. You got very solid pieces on the offensive line. And then Antonio Pierce kind of solidifying his culture, his message, being physical, tough. I just see a vision for the Raiders that's clear and evident in what they want to be. The defense is more talented now, thanks to Christian Wilkins. And it's very well schooled as well. So this is a team that feels like seven or eight wins is in their range. I wouldn't expect them to make the playoffs, but I wouldn't be shocked if they were that team that nobody really wanted to play because they're tough, they're gritty, the games go down to the end, and they just beat you up for 60 minutes. So the Raiders, I think, will go over six and a half once again in 2024. I wouldn't be shocked if they were the second best team in their division whatsoever. The Philadelphia Eagles, I got going over 10 and a half. I think the winner of the NFC East, which I assume and I'm going to predict, is going to be the Eagles, I think they will win 11 games, right? 11, 12, 13 games. I think that is going to be the winner of the NFC East, considering that two teams in this division suck, and then one team, you know, it's basically a two-team race. So it's Dallas or the Eagles. And we'll talk about the Cowboys later, but the Eagles have improved in multiple aspects, and I've discussed this many times already, but the coaching is first and foremost. It, It makes them a lot more reliable. Right, Vic Fangio is a proven defensive coordinator. Kellen Moore is a proven professional offensive coordinator. Maybe a little bit overrated, both of them at this point, but still proven professional coordinators. Last year, they had two of the worst coordinators in football. There's a reason they moved on. I'm still not a Nick Sirianni guy, but when his coordinators are working, he seems to work with his kind of hype-up, arrogant Philadelphia thing that he does. Then you've got Jalen Hurts, who I think should be healthier this year, more consistent this year. And the offensive line's always good. Saquon will improve the run game, I think. And then you've got awesome receivers, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard. The defense, I think, is faster, younger, more athletic, especially in the back end. Quinion Mitchell, Cooper DeGene. Uh, the linebackers are still worrisome, but the pass rush is still really, really good. Maybe not peak, 
what it was a couple of years ago, but really, really good, led by Jalen Carter. Hopefully, Jordan Davis can step up. You still got sweat. You've moved on from Redick, but you brought in Huff. So there's many of the same pieces there that made this team a Super Bowl team a couple of years ago. They'll be in that NFC Championship conversation, and I think they'll win the NFC East. The next over is the Cleveland Browns. I got the Browns over eight and a half. This one was almost shocking to see the number. Cleveland won 11 games last year. And I understand that the Ravens are highly projected. The Bengals are expected to get back to being the Bengals. And the Steelers are still the Steelers and they're consistent. But the Browns should be able to win nine games, right? Like they won 11 games. And I understand that Callahan's gone. And I understand that Deshaun Watson stinks. And I understand that the defense probably won't be as good as last year. But we're already baking in like two less wins anyways. So they got to win nine games. I still think the defense is really good. I still think the defensive coordinator is really good in Schwartz. You've got Miles Garrett. You've got Denzel Ward. You've got a stack defensive line. Zadarius Smith is back, right? Tomlinson is there. Emerson is there, right? Like Jordan Hicks was added to the linebacking group. Defense is still really loaded and deep on the defensive line. The offense is better right? The offensive line is going to be healthy, I think, at least to start the year, right? And then they've got quality depth, especially at tackle. David Njoku's elite at tight end, I think. Amari Cooper's really good. Jerry Judy helps. Elijah Moore is there. You've got, you know, Nick Chubb back, like the engine of this team, the identity of this team. Stefanski's a good proven coach. Like, can Deshaun Watson just steer this ship in the right direction, run the ball, bit of play action, get the ball to Cooper, get the ball to Njoku? It's not that hard, right? Stefanski can figure it out. And their defense will keep them in a lot of games and even win them some games. So Cleveland should win nine games. Even if they don't make the playoffs, I still think they win nine games. Might be a little bit disappointing, right? Uh, it would have to be pretty catastrophic. I mean, they've got like Jameis Winston coming off the bench. He's not the worst backup in the world. He could probably still fill in for a game or two and win some games here. So the Browns over eight and a half feels pretty good to me. Next up, the Jacksonville Jags over eight and a half. I actually feel pretty good about this one. and might even, you know, look to bet it. We're start, sort of getting into that range at this point. But Jacksonville over eight and a half, I think Jacksonville is being slept on. I'm not even the biggest Trevor Lawrence guy, as you know. Like, if you watch my channel and you've been following me since Trevor Lawrence was drafted, I have never been like, oh my goodness, Trevor Lawrence is Andrew Luck 2.0. I've never said that. I've never been that guy. I've never said a word about that. But when it comes to Jacksonville this year, I do think they're a little underrated. I think to start last year, they were really, really solid. And then they had some injuries and Trevor got injured and they derailed near the end of the year. This year, I kind of view them above the Colts. I put them below the Texans, but I feel pretty good about them being in the wild card conversation. I do think Lawrence is at that kind of point in his career where he's ready to kind of ascend to that top 10 conversation of quarterbacks. And I think with the weapons around him, Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram, Travis Etienne, Brian Thomas Jr. out of the draft, Gabe Davis, a pretty good offensive line that's young. Doug Peterson, a Super Bowl head coach, a solid defense with a good pass rush. Like this is a team that has all the makings of being a 10 win wildcard team. Would not be shocked by that whatsoever. So I like them going over here to reach at least nine wins in 2024. Next up, my old reliable, the San Francisco 49ers to go over 11 and a half. I know this is a high number, but it's a high number for a reason. This team has been to the NFC Championship every single season since 2021. So that's three years in a row and they've been four out of the last five years. They've got now, like in many people's minds, at least a top half of the league quarterback. I'm being very conservative in saying that with Brock Purdy, but I don't know if anyone ever really said that with Jimmy G outside of possibly one year where he was like, maybe just in that conversation. But now that Kyle Shanahan finally has a reliable, consistent quarterback, he's going to win 11 
12, 13, 14 games. Like the Niners easily soared past this number last year. They were easily the best team in the NFC all year. And they, yes, struggled a little bit in the playoffs and honestly played some of their worst football in the playoffs. And that almost makes me believe they're going to be better in many aspects this year. I think defensively, part of their play calling was a bit iffy. I think that they've improved in that area from a defensive coaching standpoint. I think that some of the depth on the defensive line, just changing the cards a little bit, right? Leonard Floyd to me is an upgrade over Chase Young. I think bringing in like Yeter Gross Matos, Malik Collins, bringing in some of these guys, Jordan Elliott. I think these names will help in the depth. I think Devondre Campbell will help. I think that Hufanga being back brings an energy, a speed, and a ferociousness to the secondary. Uh, I think that the corner position is deeper this year. I think the offense is deeper this year. The offensive line, adding Puny from the draft. I think the receiving core, adding Ricky Pearsall, is you know really deep and really talented. I think that McCaffrey's still at his peak and prime. I think Brandon Ayuk is ascending to superstardom. I think Kittle, McCaffrey, all these guys are still playing well. Debo still playing really well. Like, so to me, you've got you know just a just one of the best rosters in football, one of the best coaches in football, and it's just it's a proven entity. And uh, I don't doubt these teams, and I really am a Brock Purdy believer. So I think they win at least twelve. I think they could win 13, 14. I think they could win 15. I probably wouldn't go as high as 16 or 17, but I I see them around the same range as last year, 12 to 14 wins. I think they're going to be the number one or number two seed in the NFC. And there's really like nobody else that you would put kind of in that conversation with them outside of like possibly the Lions. Uh, like, the Niners are are still that reliable NFC threat. So despite them losing the Super Bowl, I'm not going to listen to that mumbo jumbo. I got the Niners going over 11 and a half because of common sense. The Cincinnati Bengals are going to go over 10 and a half. I think they're going to win their division this year. And I'm probably going to be sticking by that all offseason. And I think that Joe Burrow will remain healthy for the entire year. That's going to be a prediction, okay? So I I think they're going to win 12 games, Uh, probably 12 and 5. That sounds about right to me. I think that their offense is going to be really, really good, of course, with Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Joe Burrow healthy. I think that the running back position will not skip a beat without Joe Mixon, despite me loving Joe Mixon. I think the offensive line is going to be the best they've had with Joe Burrow. I think that their tight ends are are going to be a nice little mixture of uh, some different talents. I don't think they're really going to miss Callahan all that much, honestly. And I think that defensively, they should be a lot better this year than last year, especially in the secondary, the reliability of their safety position. And I think their defensive line has gotten a little bit deeper. So I think the Bengals are going to be playing with chips on their shoulders. I think they're going to be playing as that team that understands their window is kind of shortening, but it's still very much alive and people have almost forgotten what they can be. And I do view the Bengals as a team on the mission, winning like 12, 13 games this year. So Bengals will go over 10 and a half. The only reason I'm not more confident in this pick is just the injury history of this team. Next up, the Pittsburgh Steelers over seven and a half. This is just easy money. I mean, like Mike Tomlin doesn't have losing seasons and I'm just not going to bet against Mike Tomlin. I'm not an idiot. And you know, when you also look at it logically, yes, the division is really good, but they don't do bad in their division. Like they usually split with the Ravens. They might steal one from the Bengals every once in a while, and they might steal one from the Browns. Absolutely. So like, It's not really even the division that gives them trouble. It's almost like the random games that nobody sees coming, like getting, I think, blown out by the Colts in one game or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. But the Pittsburgh Steelers, I I think over seven and a half, like they're going to win eight, nine, maybe 10, maybe 11, somewhere in that range. They've got a really good defense. I think it's going to be top 10 this year with an awesome pass rush on both edges. Cam Hayward in the middle, a pretty good depth there as well. Pat Queen, I think, is going to make them a lot faster and better in coverage in the the middle of the field. You've obviously got Minka Fitzpatrick. You've got decent corners, a little bit of weakness there. But overall, the defense led by Mike Tomlin is usually really good and really opportunistic, and I don't see that changing. TJ Watt might be the best defender in football. And then offensively, 
The offensive line, I think, could rise into the top 10 conversation. I think their run game will be very good with Arthur Smith calling plays. He's a very good run schemer. Russell Wilson, I feel decent about. Like, I don't think he's going to be awful. I don't think he's going to be phenomenal. But I know he'll protect the ball, and I know he'll make the, make the right decisions mostly. And he'll make some big throws every once in a while that Kenny Pickett could not. And if not, let's plug in Justin Fields and let's let it rip. But honestly... Seven and a half feels pretty low for the Pittsburgh Steelers, given their history. The Green Bay Packers will go over nine and a half. The Green Bay Packers are super talented. And yes, they're young, uh, but I believe in them. I believe in Jordan Love. I don't see a dip or a down year for Jordan Love. The only reason they're not in like my top four or three in terms of confidence is just because Jordan Love has only played one year. And because like they didn't really change much about their team right and and they ultimately i think only won nine games last year so nine and a half would be a step up for them winning 10 11 games is what i would project for them to do this year i thought they would win nine games last year that's what happened i think they'll win 11 games this year i think jordan love is going to be that much better and more consistent especially at the beginning of the year i think he's going to be more confident i think someone in their receiving core if not two players is going to step up in a big way and i think one of them will be christian watson i think the offensive line is going to be of course always good and consistent. I think Josh Jacobs is going to be steadier than Aaron Jones on the field, right? Ready to bring it each and every Sunday. I think the defense is going to be better because I think the coaching can't be worse than what it was. And they've got ultra talent pretty much across the front seven and even aspects of their secondary, including the new Xavier McKinney. I like their draft as well in, in the safety position, the linebacker position. So I think the Packers are going to hit 11. Uh, This feels too low for me. This is almost a locked and loaded NFC playoff team in my book. The Kansas City Chiefs will go over 11 and a half. Kansas City Chiefs are the New England Patriots of this current era of football. And that is an easy 11 and a half over, right? With New England, you know, as a fan, it was like, okay, 12 is like almost the minimum, right? So 11 and a half almost feels too low with the Chiefs. Like, Their division sucks, right? Like, nobody in their division I don't think is going to beat them. Maybe the Raiders? I I don't even think the Chargers are going to sniff them. I think that the Broncos absolutely suck, so don't even put that in the conversation. And they didn't even sweep their division last year. I think they went 4-2 and in their division or something. And then the rest of the AFC, like, they play some of the tougher teams at home, like the Bengals and the Ravens the first two weeks of the season. Their defense is really good, although I don't think it will be as dominant as last year. I think it will still be very good. I think the offense is going to be more consistent, more explosive. I think they've got better receiver talent. And honestly, I just think that they kind of found a rhythm and sort of a in identity and kind of the the formula for Patrick Mahomes and sort of the 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 2023 Chiefs near the end of the year, they kind of found the way to move the ball. And I think that will remain consistent entering 2024, especially when you add a reliable pro, you know, receiver like Marquise Brown, and then potentially a really interesting rookie like Xavier Worthy, even if Hershey Rice is out of commission. So the Chiefs are 13 wins off the top of my head. So over for Kansas City. Los Angeles Rams over eight and a half. Feel really good about this one. Another reason for it, you know, when I thought about it, really, it was like, well, the only reason I would not have the Rams over eight and a half is if Matthew Stafford got hurt. But then I remembered that Jimmy Garoppolo is their backup. And I don't feel that bad about Jimmy Garoppolo being a backup quarterback in 2024 in a Shanahan offense with Sean McVay, obviously. So, yeah, they're going over eight and a half. Like, I like this bet quite a bit. They've still got one of the better offenses in football. If not, I think they could be the best offense this this year. That, that might be a hot take. But Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup, uh, really solid offensive line. They've got Williams in the backfield. I wish they were a little bit more talented at tight end, but I like a lot of the pieces they've got there on offense. And I think they'll be able to dictate games through the ground game, through the air. Stafford is still an absolute stud and for whatever reason, still slept on. And then the defense, I think they improved aspects. Obviously, you lose Aaron Donald, you lose Raheem Morris. I've brought this up many times, and that's going to hurt. 
but they've got young ascending players entering year two or year three that should pick up a little bit of the slack. The secondary should improve. I'm intrigued to see Tredavious White. Darius Williams can still play. I like the Cameron Curl signing. And I think that, you know, a guy like Ernest Jones, I think super underrated player, just giving him a shout out. But the Rams, over eight and a half. I think they'll make the playoffs. I think they'll win nine to 11 games this year. Probably won't win the division because the Niners, but probably will make the playoffs. The Detroit Lions, over 10 and a half are my second favorite over pick. The Lions just feel really good to me right now. Like, I just feel very comfy and cozy about the Lions, which is very weird. Maybe that's not a good thing. But I think there's different aspects to it. I kind of know what Jared Goff is. He's not like Patrick Mahomes, but he's good. There's a reason they paid him. The offensive line is one of the more consistent and one of the best in football, if not the best in football. The run game is really good. And they can run on basically everybody for a good amount of the game, right? Sam Laporta, year two, should be just as good, if not better, right? Jameer Gibbs, I think, could ascend in year two as well. I think Amon Ra is a stud. I think that Jamison Williams could be much better this year, given a bigger role. And I just feel really good about Ben Johnson, what he brings from a weekly basis, what the offense brings on a weekly basis. Just feel like it's very consistent. Defensively, I feel much better about them this year, which is the first time I said this about Dan Campbell's Lions. I feel good about the defense in a certain way. I feel like Aiden Hutchinson is that stud that they they have and they need, right, on the defensive line. I think DJ Reader is a really competent piece in the interior that kind of helps sort of secure my thought of the defensive line. I think he's really going to help them in the run game. I like the Marcus Davenport addition. I think they've got solid depth on that front. The linebackers are all right. Safeties, I think, are underrated. And the corners, I think Carlton Davis it was an awesome addition. I think that getting back uh, Emmanuel Mosley was not a bad addition. I think that Amik Robertson was a decent little signing. I think that this draft pick of Arnold was a nice one. I like, you know, the draft overall for the secondary. And I just feel a lot better about the consistency of the defense. I like the coaching a lot. I think Dan Campbell clearly has this team, you know, in his hands. Like, this is a team that should win 12 games. They should win their division, win 12 games. Unless Jared Goff gets hurt, this is an over team to me. So, 10 and a half feels, you know, probably right because they're not the Chiefs or the Niners in terms of reputation. So, you're not going to give them an 11 and a half, but it is a little too low, too. And my favorite over pick, you guys probably have guessed this by now, the Houston Texans over nine and a half. I don't even know if I have to explain this at this point. I've talked about the Texans so many times, but nine and a half is like stealing. Like, I don't even know what to say. Like the, the Texans are sick. The Texans are sick. I have a crush on their entire team. Like, their, their offensive line is one of the bigger question marks on their team, and their offensive line is not even bad. This team has Nico Collins, Stephon Diggs, and Tank Dell, and then they've got Joe Mixon and Dalton Schultz as afterthoughts, right? And they've got C.J. Stroud, who I think people know he's good, but I don't think they know how good C.J. Stroud. Like, C.J. Stroud is a stud. Like, S-T-U-D, capital letter, underline. Okay, defensively, they're going to be better this year. D'Amico Ryan's another year in that system with the players that he kind of has has picked up. Like, Daniil Hunter, man, with Will Anderson. Like, that alone is just sick. And then you've got D'Amico Autry. Um, even Fatakazi is not a bad pickup. Like, I think that they improved linebacker this offseason. Al Shair is a stud. I think their secondary, Derek Stingley, I expect to ascend. I'm intrigued by their alternative corner spots outside of number one. I think that might be a tad weakness, but man, like a team's got to have some soft spots, right? Like this team for a nine and a half, like this team could win the AFC. I, I really think that nine and a half is crazy. This is an easy bet for me. This isn't over, okay? Let's move to the negative. Right, the the under teams, 
the 16 under teams. And we're going to go from least confident in my under selection for them to most confident that they're going to go under their win total. All right. So the first team is obviously the New York Jets. I have no idea what the New York Jets are going to do this year. I think that they're loaded. I think that they're stacked. And I wanted to put them in the over category. But my problem is I can't actually realistically go on YouTube, on the internet for the world to see and advise because I am in some way, shape or form advising you to bet over or under for these teams. I cannot advise even Jets fans to place their hard earned money on the Jets to go over nine and a half. That is a spicy number. And what made me less confident was that they have to play the Niners in San Francisco in week one on Monday Night Football. Like, are you kidding me? Week one, like this team just, it feels like the NFL has it out for this team and for Aaron Rodgers, which does not give me confidence in their win total. Okay. Now I love the roster. I think it's loaded. I don't know what Aaron Rodgers is going to be this year though. I do feel like he could be a little washed and that's concerning, right? I do think their defense is awesome. I do think they have a top five defense, maybe a top three defense, but it is a little thin at linebacker, safety, corner. It's a little thinner than I would like. And injuries concern me about this team. And then defense or offensively, I just don't love the coaching. And I'm not really sure if Mike Williams is going to be healthy consistently. I'm not really sure if they have kind of depth of weaponry if Mike Williams is not active. And the offensive line, I think, is very much improved. But it is kind of old especially Morgan Moses, Tyron Smith at the tackle positions. Now, they did draft another tackle that makes me feel more confident. Brees Hall is a stud. They can rely on him to run the ball. So I do think they're going to win. It feels like they're going to win nine games. And, I, and that's kind of why I lean towards the under. Because I honestly, like, I don't even know if Rodgers is going to play all 17 games. Like, I could see him missing a couple games this year. So that concerns me too. But... This is a really tough one because I honestly want the Jets to go over their win total. I want the Jets to win 11 games. I want the Jets to win this division this year. But other than the Patriots, I just know they're not going to the Patriots. But the Jets, I think, out of the teams that are realistic, I'd like them to make the playoffs. I think it would be good for football. But I also feel like football doesn't really even want it. You know what I mean? So I'm going under, but I don't want it to go under. The New Orleans Saints are next. I'm going to go under seven and a half. This one was tough. Uh, I could see them winning eight or nine games. And I wouldn't be surprised. But I almost feel like th this is going to run out at some point, right? Like Dennis Allen is one of the worst head coaches in football. Like their, their coaching staff in general is one of the worst coaching staffs in football. I think Derek Carr is that one veteran quarterback that like is not really good. He's not really bad. But nobody is excited to watch Derek Carr in 2024. Like, absolutely no one except for Nicholas Gill. Okay? The offensive line, I think, is, is falling apart at the seams. I, th I think one injury, and it could be a problem. I think Elvin Kamara is regressing. I think the receiving core is Chris Olave and a little bit inconsistency behind it. And the defense is just continuing to kind of, like, stay together they're not as good as they used to be. They're not bad. They're inconsistent. They have their moments, but they're also a little bit older at certain spots or certain key pieces that they used to have at a high level. So the Saints feel like a 7-10. and 10. With Atlanta improving and being a better team, you would think, Carolina being a little bit better, Tampa being probably about what they were last year, the Saints feel like a 7-10. and 10. Now, maybe that's just sneaking it under, and I should have went over for an eight-win team, but like that's just kind of how I feel. That's why it's near the bottom of this list. There's not a lot of confidence in it, but they feel like a seven and 10, man. I just don't know how else to put it. The Chicago Bears are next up, and I actually have them under eight and a half. If I had to bet this, I'd have them eight and a half under because I think the NFC North is really competitive. I think that the Vikings are probably the worst team in the division just due to the quarterback. And they're not that bad, right? 
The Lions and the Packers, I have over their win totals for both of them. I think the Packers will win 10 or 11, and I think the Lions will win 12 or 13. Like, I feel that good about those teams. So then, you know, you're talking about a Bears team that won seven last year. I think they'll win eight this year. I think they'll be slightly better. Maybe the same. Like, set. they played a really kind of easy schedule last year, and I don't think that's going to replicate this year. I also think they're going to have a target on their backs. Because of Caleb Williams. I think, I don't think players will love Caleb Williams across the NFL. I do think that him being the first overall pick is going to make them a team that a lot of people want to show out and just beat. Like they just have that kind of arrogance to their, to their team right now. It's very exciting. It's fun. I think they could win nine or 10 and have the potential to make the playoffs and, and, and be the second best team in the division or make the wild card. Like that is their high end potential. That's not what I predict, though. I predict like seven or eight wins. I predict a lot of fun. I predict a lot of inconsistency. I predict a roller coaster of a season. I think the defense is a little overrated based on what they did at the end of last year. I just don't love the defensive line. I think the secondary is solid, but it's a lot of Jalen Johnson. I like Jaquan Brisker, but the other pieces, they're just meh to me. Like linebackers are good. I think Matt Eberflus is a meh coach. I think that Shane Waldron isn't, he's okay as an offensive coordinator. Like, I don't know, man. I like the, I like the receive. I love the receivers. Like that makes me so enticed, but we can't just look at the receivers. Like the O-line has not put it all together yet. I think this is a seven or eight win team at the end of the day, guys. Eight and a half is a really tough number, but that's kind of how I see it with Chicago. Next, I almost don't want to put this on the screen, but I have the Carolina Panthers going under four and a half. I'm sorry. I just need to see Bryce Young, like, be decent at football before I pick them to win five games. They won, guys, put it this way. Like, I, this is all I'm going to say about Carolina. I'm not going to try to be your, your partner. I'm not going to try to be your friend, Panthers fans, because obviously I'm not here. But, and I feel bad, but, and even with the improvements of the receiving core, the offensive line, all that stuff. The Panthers won two games last year and they were both at the end of the game, game winning field goal. Like they didn't, they almost didn't win a single freaking football game. So how are they going to win five? I get that they've improved a little bit and Dave Canales I like, but he's a rookie coach. Bryce Young, I still think is not good. I think they're going to win four games. And, and that's why I have them going under. It sucks to say it out loud, but it's just the way it is. Next, the Indianapolis Colts I actually have going under. Well, I, I can see the comments now. Uh, the comments are going to have me uh, just on an absolute roast like Tom Brady. But, man, the, the, the Colts, I think, are going to win seven or eight games this year. I think they're a little bit overhyped uh, by Colts fans mostly. And maybe some section of fans. But I like Jacksonville more. I like the Texans more. I think the Colts are probably third in their division. Although, again, I think the Titans are better than people think. And I said that in my overs. I think that the Colts, I just think Anthony Richardson is a lot of potential, but not a lot of substance. For one, is he going to be able to play 17 games? I'm just being smart about my selections here. Is Anthony Richardson going to be able to play the entire year? Because if he misses four games, that's really going to hurt this team. How good is he really? That's number two. Number three, I think the defense, outside of the defensive line, which is good, is not very good. Like, I think the defense is the defensive line and not a lot else. Linebackers are okay. I'll give you that. The run game is pretty good. The receivers, they're all right. Like, it's not its not the Bears receivers. I just talked about the Bears receivers. And they're not the Texans receivers. I think Jacksonville has better receivers. Like, you're counting on Mitchell being the savior. Um, I just, I feel like the Colts are just a little overrated from a talent standpoint. I love Shane Steichen, but I can't just rely on the coach to carry everything. So I think they're probably going to be an 8-9 and nine team. Depending on how good Richardson is. Obviously, they could go over here if he just proves to be an absolute stud. But I'm going to hold my judgment. The Minnesota Vikings, I have going under 6.5, and, and this sucks. Because I like the Vikings a lot. I hope that 
they go over, but this division, I've discussed it already in a previous video. This is the second best division in the NFL. Chicago, I have winning about eight games, as I just discussed. I have the Lions winning about 12, and then the Packers winning 10 or 11. So for the Vikings, just realistically speaking, doing the math, six feels right. Six and 11, right? This is a kind of a retooling, rebuilding year. I think they're going to be very competitive, sort of like they were last year, like seven and 10 at the end of the year, but they don't have Kirk Cousins for the first half of the year, right? They have Sam Darnold or they have a rookie in JJ McCarthy who's pretty raw. So either way, they're just going to be outgunned at quarterback for like 90% of the games. And then defensively, you kind of wonder how much improvement will be had given the fact that they were very productive last year, but they didn't have a lot of talent and a lot of it was smoke and mirrors and confusion. And you wonder if different matchups will give different results. You also wonder how this will play out on offense with the kind of lackluster quarterback play. How, how good will their offense actually be? So a lot of questions for the Vikings. I think six or seven is probably where they're going to land. So I'm either going to be wrong by half a game or right by half a game. That's kind of how I feel about the Vikings. The Miami Dolphins under nine and a half. I think the Miami Dolphins, I've said it many times. Like you kind of know how I feel already about the Dolphins. I think they're going to take a slight step back. I could see them making the playoffs as like the seven seed. Isn't that what they did last year? Uh, I could also see them missing the playoffs just barely. I think nine and eight feels right for Miami. Now, obviously this is factoring in that Tua is probably going to be healthy. But again, that is not a given. I would say that I just don't have any confidence in the offensive line or the defensive line to produce. I think they're going to have a trouble, uh, you know, just protecting, trouble with the run defense, trouble with the run game in general. I think, again, Mike McDaniel is going to have to pull something out of his rear end to make this work at the offensive line level. And defensively, I'm not sold. This isn't Vic Fangio giving me the confidence of last year. And I think last year's team was more talented. And they still kind of maneuvered their way to being a bit disappointing last year. So... I have them at nine and eight, and I'm going under nine and a half. The Buffalo Bills, I'm going under 10 and a half, but not by much. I think the Bills will be about 10 wins. I think that they might win the division. And based on my over under projections, I do have them winning the division because I have the Jets also going under at nine and eight or eight and nine ish. So I have Buffalo at 10 and seven and winning the division right now. But I think under 10 and a half feels right because I think there's going to be. There's going to be a period of adjustment for the offense, for the receiving core, for understanding who is going to be their guys, who Josh Allen's going to be able to rely on, who he's not going to be able to rely on. I think there's going to be certain defenses that they come across that it's going to be really hard to move the ball. I think that defensively, they're not quite as purely talented as they used to be. And I think there's going to be games where maybe they're given some issues against lesser offenses. But I also feel like the defense should kind of figure it out near the end of the year. This is kind of how I feel about Buffalo. I think similarly to the Chiefs last year, they're going to figure it out near the end of the season. So they might lose some games early that maybe they shouldn't, but that will land them about 10 and 7. I mean, last year, what was their record? Like 11 and 6, 10 and 7? It was similar. They had some injuries, but I did feel like overall they maybe had more proven talent. So that's a, it's a tough one. The Los Angeles Chargers, I have under 8.5. I never hesitated on this one very much. The only hesitation is Herbert and Harbaugh, but otherwise, I just feel like this team is going off of reputation of Herbert and Harbaugh, and nobody's really looking at their roster. I, I think their roster, outside of the offensive tackle position and a couple edge rushers and a couple safeties, they don't have a lot of talent. So I think eight and a half is a great number because I think Vegas is going to get some play on the over for people that are just counting on Herbert and Harbaugh to bail this team out. And I think there's going to be play on the under because I think people just understand the Chargers. They usually disappoint anyways. I think they're a year or two away of really being a competitive playoff type of team, probably a year away. And I think that they're just a little overrated because of the coach and the quarterback because the roster just isn't that good. That's just how I feel. I think the defense is going to be bottom 10 in the league. 
I think the offense will struggle because they don't have great receivers. The Baltimore Ravens under 11 and a half. I don't think the Ravens will win their division this year. I think that will be the Bengals. And I think the Ravens will probably still make the playoffs. But I would expect it to be 11 and 6, 10 and 7 type of season. I'd also say about the Ravens, why I like this under is Lamar, like just being healthy. Like, let's be fair, Lamar has often been injured. And last year, basically being fully healthy, you would almost believe that the following year he might slip up and miss a couple games. So you always have that factor with the Ravens. The offensive line is also a concern for me, big time. I also think that the receiving core hasn't really improved much. And I wonder how impactful Derrick Henry truly will be at this stage of his career. The defense, I think, is going to miss a step and take a step back with Mike McDonald leaving. So uh, I I think the Ravens are an under for sure. I I think they're 11 or 10 wins, but 11 and a half just feels too rich. The New York Giants, under six and a half. This is just not a very talented team. They don't have a very good quarterback. I like Brian Dayball. I don't mind the defensive coordinator higher, but they've got a flawed secondary. You're counting on Malik Neighbors to be the savior of the offense, pretty much. No more Saquon Barkley. Darren Waller's retiring. The offensive line, you know, as much as I think it's improved, it's still suspect. So the Giants are just not a very talented football roster. And there's not much else to have to be said here. I think they're probably going to win six, five, six games and go under six and a half, land themselves probably a quarterback in the draft. The Arizona Cardinals, under six and a half. The Cardinals, I feel pretty good about this. I think Kyler is good. I think that Marvin Harrison Jr. is immediately going to be good. And I like the offensive line. I like uh, Trey McBride. And I like the offense. I just think the defense is not very good. I think the defense is going to get scored on. I think that the other teams are going to be able to possess the ball. I think their division is very tough. I think they're the worst team in the division. Maybe they win seven games and they just beat out my expectation here. But I have them around floating around six. I I could see a six and 11 for them. I think Kyler is more kind of like magic and fun than he is actual wins. Like that's how I view Kyler in a way. Like I need to see him have another like winning season. But defensively, again, is mostly the story here. I don't feel bad about the offense whatsoever. I think they've got quite a few pieces. It's just the defense, the the, the coaching staff is still a little unproven. So I think they're a year away from, from floating over that win total. The Atlanta Falcons. I have under nine and a half. Uh, the more I've thought about the Falcons, I don't love the state of the defense. I think Raheem Morris will help it, but I don't love the talent overall. I think they're pretty flawed in the secondary besides A.J. Terrell and Jesse Bates. I think the linebackers are fine. I think that's the best word. Their edge rush is still extremely lousy. And their interior defensive line, their best players on their defense, they're aging, right? And then the offense, it's just like, is Kirk Cousins going to be good off of a torn Achilles? That's a tough assumption. The offensive line is good, but how much of the run game and the success there was actually Arthur Smith and how much will that carry over? Because Arthur Smith is a good run game guy. And then receiving wise, they really got Drake London. Kyle Pitts is maybe a little overrated. Will he step up? So the Falcons, they could win eight or nine. 10 feels a bit rich for my blood. The Dallas Cowboys, under 10 and a half. I think the Cowboys are going to win nine, 10 games, um, maybe eight, but I think they're going to be in that range. Uh, I've already expressed my disinterest for this team. I I am usually pretty like exact on the Cowboys every year. I rather am right about the Cowboys or I'm right about the Cowboys. Like I'm usually never wrong about this team. Uh, I don't know if it's because my dad's a fan of the team or what, but I usually have a very good feeling for what the Cowboys are going to be. Last year, I was pretty much on par and even like I was a lot higher than a lot of other people on the Cowboys and I was proven pretty right outside of the playoff run, right? They were a really good regular season team and they were easily you know, into those playoffs and the number two seed in the NFC, I I believe. This year, though, I I definitely see where they have lost players, pieces in general. The offensive line is going to be a bit of an issue at times. The running back position is not very explosive and fun. The receiving core, I think, is just okay. Uh, CD Lamb's awesome, but otherwise, eh, it's just okay. The defense, I think they're good, but I don't think they're great, especially when you remove Dan Quinn, 
when you remove Stephon Gilmore, when you remove Dorrance Armstrong, when you remove some of these pieces, Jerron Kersey, then some pieces that I think really help them become, you know, go from a good defense, solid defense to a very good defense the last couple of years. So Dallas, they're, they're a step below the Eagles for me, under 10 and a half. The Washington Commanders is my second favorite underpick at six and a half. The Commanders, they're just not like, they're not going to get there. I, I mean, this might even be my number one pick, to be honest with you. Like, I don't want to be like a hater or whatever, because I've already expressed that I'm not a huge Jaden Daniels guy. And I, I just think it, it makes me come across as a hater. And because I'm a Drake May guy, that almost feels like there's bias there, but Really, no. It's just when I look at the roster, it's like, sure, their division, they've got the Giants there, which they're not great. So maybe they could pass them up. But the O-line still sucks. The receiving core is two players. The running backs are eh, meh. Jaden Daniels is a rookie, no matter what you think of him. How good is he really going to be? Marcus Mariota is not going to win you football games in 2024. Defensively, they've got a lot of question marks. Edge rusher, they improved the position, but is Dorrance Armstrong a number one edge rusher in the NFL? Linebacker, I think, is improved. I think that's the area I feel most confident about. Safety is meh. Corner is, I don't know. And how is Dan Quinn going to perform as a head coach now, back as a head coach, without some of the pieces that made his defense so successful, like a Micah Parsons coming off the edge? or like a really good cornerback group that could play man coverage. I just don't know. So the commanders to me, six and a half. I just don't know if either of their offense or defense are going to be all that good. So I have to go under. And then the number one under team, Denver Broncos under five and a half. I mean, I've been preaching this all season. I don't know if I'm the only person that has the Broncos as the worst team in the NFL because five and a half is in line with the Patriots and obviously the Panthers have a lower total at four and a half and I have them going lower. I think the Broncos are going to win like three games this year, maybe four, maybe because of Sean Payton, Vance Joseph, the coaching staff, you feel a little bit better about them than let's say Carolina. But I think Carolina's roster is better. I think Denver doesn't have anything elite about their team. Not a, not a single thing. Their secondary is not elite. Their pass rush is not elite. Their run defense is not elite. Their quarterback is certainly not elite. Their run game is not elite. Their offensive line is not elite. Their wide receiver core is not elite. They don't have anything that they can hang their hat on. I don't know what they're going to go into games and say, this is where we dominate. The O-line has, they're, they're not as good. They lost their center. The receiving core is not as good. The running back position is meh. The defense is average at best. They've got no real pass rushers. So I, I don't know, man. Like this team sucks. They're not good. They're not quite as low on my spectrum of I think this team sucks as the Cardinals last year, but the Broncos are pretty bad, and they're going to be starting a rookie quarterback, so that's that's pretty depressing. Uh, so I got the Broncos under 5.5. Those are my win total picks for the overs and the unders across the NFL, all 32 teams. If you enjoyed, Gronk Spike the like button. Don't forget to subscribe for more. BLV, a lot of schedule content coming. Very excited for that. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.